before we begin, uh, here's just a little housekeeping. First, it's important to remember that this is not medical advice. I am making this video with the sole purpose of giving you a jumping off point for your own research. Second, be kind to each other in the comments. Everyone's transition looks different, and what works best for you might not be what's best for someone else. Finally, YouTube's algorithm works off a few metrics. Watch time, whether or not you're subscribed, and whether or not you click on to another video from my channel. The best free way for you to support my content creation is to watch the videos all the way to the end, click the like button, and subscribe to my channel. All right, let's get to it. Hello everyone, I'm Zach Lettercast. Welcome to my channel. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. Thank you so much for clicking and viewing and liking and sharing and leaving your comments and for those of you who aren't subscribed, subscribing. Today we're going to be talking about, well actually this is our last episode in the phalloplasty series. We're going to be talking about fibula free flap phalloplasty, say that 10 times fast, and it's just going to be a basic overview followed by a more in-depth discussion on what the surgical procedure might actually look like. And as always, I am not a medical professional. Please always, always, always consult your medical team before making any decisions regarding your personal physical or mental health. And without further ado, let's begin. All right, so we're on to our last phalloplasty procedure, and that is going to be fibula free flap phalloplasty, FFF. <laughs> And this one is really fascinating. This one has some potential issues with longevity of the results, but let's kind of get into what this is first. The benefits of this surgery is that you're going to have no forearm scar. You're going to have natural rigidity without an implant due to the use of your fibula bone. You're going to have a barrier to preserved clitoris, and you may be compatible um, with urethroplasty depending on your surgeon and your end results. You can expect tactile sensation, you can expect the ability to penetrate, you can expect a length of 1.5 to 6 inches, however there are risks. The two like really big risks here, number one, the fibula bone that is used to create rigidity in the neophallus may actually end up being reabsorbed by your body. That's one thing. And number two, your risks related to your donor area recovery and post-operative use of your leg, your ankle, in terms of walking, running, balance, stability, there's a lot of risk there. They take a significant chunk of your fibula, which means that of the two bones that hang out in the bottom half of your leg, one of them is mostly gone. You've got two surgery stages here. You've got your phalloplasty as stage one, and stage two is your debulking and glansplasty. And the surgeons who offer fibula free flap are going to be few and far between. <laughs> there is one in Texas, and the rest are going to be outside of the United States. Strongly encourage whoever wants to undergo this procedure to read up on as much literature as possible. On the screen are a few of the studies that I think are worth reading. Some of them are recent, more of them are older. As you can see, this is not an incredibly popular procedure, however, I can understand the appeal. So, the fibula free flap phalloplasty is again similar in process to any phalloplasty that is using a flap donor site method. However, it does have some differences. Uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is sensation. Tactile sensation in the top and some area of the bottom of the phallus is provided by re innervating the flap with the lateral sural cutaneous nerve. The LCSN, as it is also called, may be connected to one of the two dorsal clitoral nerves. While some patients have claimed to have erogenous sensation in the phallus, this is not the expected result, and for this reason, the contralateral clitoral dorsal nerve and the clitoris should be left untouched in those who wish to preserve erogenous sensation. This particular surgery also uses the osseocutaneous fibula flap. 
um, in which the harvested fibula bone is transplanted and fixed to the cubic symphysis, providing rigidity. The condition of this flap was found to be favorable after up to one year of follow-up. However, there are risks of bone absorption, curving, and fracture, and the rigid appearance of the phallus can be difficult to conceal, which may be a source of embarrassment to some. The first use of the fibula flap for phalloplasty existed, uh, was documented in 1992. The flap can be harvested in a single stage or pre-laminated to create a neourethra. The pre-lamination of the neurethra tends to reduce the incidence of urethral fistulas and better controlled girth because the flap is wrapped around the urethra rather than tubed. For pre-lamination of the, of the neourethra, a full thickness skin graft wrapped around the catheter is inserted into the leg. At the second stage, the fibula osteocutaneous flap is harvested based on the peroneal vessels along the posterior interosseous septum, leaving 7 centimeters of fibula bone approximately and distally. The skin paddle can be oriented horizontally and then tubed or vertically and then folded on itself. For the vertical skin pattern, the distal skin paddle contains the fibula and the prelaminated urethra and is then folded in the form of the ventral side of the penis. The proximal skin paddle is more sensate and forms the dorsal side of the penis. The sensation of the flap is provided by the LSCN, which courses posterior to the septum in 74% of cases, with an anterior branch in 26% of cases. Hage et al. recommended preoperative sensory marking by injecting lidocaine over the biceps femoris tendon and marking the resulting numb area on the lateral and marking the resulting numb area on the lateral aspect of the lower leg. The bone is then fixed to the penile corpora cavernosa or the pubic symphysis. Hage et al. suggests making the bone around 2 centimeters longer than the skin paddle so that the phallus is not floppy. The fibula provides rigidity and in many cases obviates the need for a penile prosthesis, which can be fraught with complication. However, the bone is subject to reabsorption, warping, and fracture over time, and some find it difficult to conceal in pants. Debernig et al. have described a perineal fasciocutaneous flap over the leg that does not include the fibula. This technique addresses the criticism that the permanent rigidity of the osteocutaneous fibula flap can be difficult to conceal. The primary advantage of the fibula site is the ease of concealing the donor site. In early experience with the flap, the rate of urethral fistulas was very high. Prelamination of the urethra, however, has reduced the incidence, but it does add an additional step in the reconstructive process. Thank you so much, guys, for joining me on this journey to explore phalloplasty options. If you liked this series, let me know in the comments. I want to do more. <laughs> I want to do more. I'm thinking of covering meta next or top surgery. And um, this really is in my wheelhouse. I love learning about medical stuff and I love talking about it and sharing it with people. So if you liked this, let me know. If you hated it, also let me know. Just leave a comment on what it is you do want me to cover next. Thank you again. I hope this was educational and I will see you next time.